Now unto Jehovah, ye sons of mighty, O holy, in strength and dominion, accord, ascribe to him glory, and render him honor and beauty of holiness, worship Lord. The voice of Jehovah comes down on the waters, and thunder the God of the glory draws nigh. Go over the waves of the white flowing waters, Jehovah's King is enthroned on high. Now unto Jehovah, ye sons of the mighty, O holy in strength and dominion of all, ascribe to him glory and render him honor and beauty of holiness, worship the Lord. The voice of Jehovah is mighty, is mighty. The voice of Jehovah in majesty speaks. The voice of Jehovah, the cedars is breaking. Jehovah, the cedars of Lebanon breaks. Now unto Jehovah, ye sons of the mighty, O glory, strength, and dominion of Ascribe to him glory and render him honor and beauty of holiness, worship the Lord. Each one in his temple his glory proclaimeth. He sat on the flood, he is king on his throne. Jehovah, all strength to his people imparted. Jehovah, with peace ever blesseth his own. Jehovah, ye sons of mighty, O holy, strength and dominion of all, O strive to the glory and render him honor and beauty of holiness, worship the My heart is not proud, my eyes not haughty, I do not concern myself with things too great, oh wonderful for me. a child in its mother's arms so I am still so still in my soul in me
works for good. His sovereign gracious will has stood and will through endless ages stand, sustained and ordered by his hand. In goodness God stretched out the sky, the sun and moon and stars that cry. Almighty God has made all things, creation groans and shouts and sings, Almighty God has made all things. From heaven's bounty, God gives food to saint and rebel, bad and good. Our God in all things needs men's eyes, the just and unjust kind of things. When clouds descend and troubles rise, despair and darkness, tears and sighs, yet God is good and grieved and wrongs, and bears his own who bear the cross, yet God is good and grieved and wrongs. I must have some kind of authority because you guys got real quiet when I came up here. <laughs> well, good morning, church. Good morning. We're here to praise the Lord and honor and glorify Him this morning. Let's all stand for the call to worship. A reading from Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise, the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord this morning as we sing. Now is the 
to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords. So, Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving this morning for being our Savior, for going to the cross, dying for our sins, but claiming victory over the grave so that we, too, can have that same, that same hope of being in heaven someday. And so we just ask a blessing upon this service right now, Lord, as we sing for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Wondrous Cross. What an awesome, awesome song. Bless your 
Well, good morning. Someone's missing today. I can't figure out who it is. Oh, Pastor Steve. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Pastor Steve is um, with the youth on a camping. And you're going to see him preach the message on the screen. It's pre-recorded, so I'm pretty excited to see how that all works out. But um, praise God um, for our youth, Kevin and Wendy. It's just awesome to see the young people out having their own service together with Pastor Steve. It's pretty awesome. Uh, we have an announcement from Pam. Pam? Who's going up there? I confused her, I'm sorry. Good morning. It is barbecue time, so if you haven't signed up, Back in the narthex, sign up for the barbecue. It's Saturday at noon. Michael's going to be cooking some of the meats, and we will be having baby back spare ribs. Or ribs, anyway, baby back ribs. And so we'd like to see everyone there. So if you haven't signed up, sign up, and you can pay at the door when you come in. So that's it. See you at the barbecue. And yeah, don't forget, it's for the whole family, too, so... Um Bring your bratty, I'm going to key your kids and friends and whoever else you want to bring. So it's always a fun time together uh, and great, great food. I know everybody here likes to eat, so it'd be great to see you there. Uh, I don't have any more announcements unless somebody else has something very important we should hear. Um, as we go to prayer this morning, I'm going to say a general prayer. I don't have a list of everybody that's not doing well, although Roland. I don't know how many of you know that, but he fell. He broke three ribs, messed up his arm, and now Pam is his blood pressure is back. Good, doing good. She's back there talking. Anyway, pray for Roland um, uh, for a speedy recovery. Also for Pam. Um, and all those who, you know, we have people here that have cancer, right? We need to pray for them in general, too. So um, cancer is an ugly word, but it seems like everybody... It, it, if they're not involved themselves, know somebody that has cancer. So uh, we'll keep everybody in prayer and keep our needs. Janie, how are you doing? Okay, good. Well, let's go to <coughs> let's go to Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, sometimes it's hard to know where to start praising you because you're so awesome. If we was to con everything you did for us, Lord, we'd be here for days. For you are a loving, forgiving, merciful, perfect God who sent your son to die because we needed a Savior to bridge that gap between you and our, ourselves. So we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of your son and then the victory over the grave. I try to picture sometimes when we pass away just being ushered to heaven by angels. What a wonderful hope that we have as believers. And I pray everyone here is a believer, Lord. But I just pray for your mercy upon those who are not. That somehow the Holy, the Holy Spirit will draw that to you. I know, Lord, you know, we say, why don't you come, Lord? The world is such a mess. But we know that you're waiting for others to come to you to be saved. So we pray for salvation for those names in the box here that we put in there. We pray for every Sunday 
Lord. And for, for those we may know, whether it's friends or family that aren't saved yet, give us the heart, Lord, to evangelize, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to them. I can't imagine them getting, dying someday and then finding out we never shared Christ with them. Help us, Lord. Give us boldness through the Spirit of God to open our mouths and to witness for Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this church, for the wonderful people here, kind, caring people, faithful followers of yours. We thank you. We always pray for Pastor Steve, Lord, that you may continue to encourage him, Lord, and fill him with your spirit and strengthen his ministry here. And also, Megan and the girls are such an important part of his ministry. We pray for, for them, for Megan and her, for MS, Lord. It's good to see her standing up here, praising the Lord with songs. We pray for all those who may be ill today, Lord. We have people who have cancer. Uh, people are just struck with flus or whatever it might, whatever, whatever it might be that we want. We pray for them. We thank you for them. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we may be caring enough to maybe drop a card or a phone call or something so that they know we're thinking of them, praying for them. Pray for Janie, Lord. She may continue to strengthen her through this radiation she's getting. We pray for Roland, Lord, who, who, who I assume is still in the hospital. He was taking their intensive care for a while. Breaking ribs, it has, it's painful. And get his blood uh, pressure regulated, Lord, so that he might be stronger. And again, we just pray for all those this morning who have need, whether it's spiritual, uh, mental, physical. Lord, because you are the great physician, you are a caring, loving God. And we pray for your touch in their lives today. And even those may be hurting emotionally, Lord, maybe they're sad about something or someone in their family or whatever it is. We lift them up to God this morning to give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. And we pray for uh, the youth group that are in the camping, that you will keep them safe and uh, that you will uh, teach them whatever they're being taught, that they might open their hearts and minds to, to receive the, your good word. And we pray that you'll bring them home safely. Thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you this morning. And we praise you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. That was my phone that rang. I don't know whether you heard it or not. It rings in my ears. So I couldn't hear it. Good. It kind of threw me off. But anyway, <laughs> well, let's all stand as we begin uh, and our other two praises, How Deep the Father's Love. It's a beautiful song. Uh, it always reminds me of John 3.16. You know, let's say John 3.16 together, okay? For God, God so loved, loved the world, world that he that gave his, his only begotten Son. son. That, that whoever, whoever believes, believes in him, him will shall not, not perish, perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Amen. Hey, Bill. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all men. That he should give his only son to make a wretched treasure. How great the pain of sinning was! The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulder. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. 
His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. Amen. Amen. You may be, you may be seated during this next song if you feel like you need to be seated. Sometime I I don't know people don't can't stand very long. So this next one you know very well. We haven't sung it for a while. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Praise God this morning and shout to the Lord. Okay, Billy. Thank you. 
we're going to give this a try. <laughs> um, Pastor C is going to bring the message to you, and I don't know whether he's having some young people speak or not, but whatever it is, I'm sure we'll be blessed. So I'll turn it over to the camera people back there. Hey, today I'm delivering the sermon a little differently. I'm with the youth on their Niagara Falls trip, and we're recording the message with the youth group. And if you, if you can see behind me, that's heading down to the Horseshoe Falls, wasn't it? Yes. The Horseshoe Falls. This is great. Yesterday we did a whole lot of things while we were here, and right now they're getting attacked by bugs, but it's not too bad. It's not like we're in the Amazon or anything. <laughs> yesterday we did Maid of the Mist. We did Cave of the Cave of the Winds. For, uh, Thursday night we did fireworks and. That brings us to where we're at now. We've been doing Bible studies with the students at least twice a day, and long ones. They've, been, they've had great discussions. So on Thursday night, I led the first Bible study. We walked over to the falls, we watched the fireworks, and we sat down at Goat Island, and I read Acts 6, 1 through 7. I gave an overview of the passage, which we're going to read here in just a moment, and I asked for discussion. Some of the discussion was related to the passage. Other parts of the discussion were related to Niagara Falls and the youth series that Kevin has been teaching. And let me explain a little bit about that. Kevin has been teaching using foundations material called Foundations from Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis. And they've been talking about creation. And so, you know, uh, some of the students, I'm just going to share some things they share. As we looked at the falls, we could see the skyline of Niagara in the background. And we saw all of these big hotels. And the students shared... Uh, you know, we know these hotels had a designer, and we see Niagara Falls. You know, Niagara Falls is what God can do, what God can do. The hotels, skyscrapers, that's what man can do, but they had a designer, and so did the falls. They had a designer. As we look at Acts 6, we see the mission continue, and the church continue to grow. One student shared that we call this the Acts of the Apostles. Well, we see what God is doing. The church is growing, and we have Saul. And we know, as, we, we know as Paul, and God literally knocks him down to get his attention. The church is growing and God is at work. Further, one student shared how he went to New York City during a school trip. And people were lined up to get into a church. So just like we see the church growing and exploding in growth in the book of Acts, they saw that in New York City. People are still hungry for God. Later in Acts 6, we see Stephen sees, And he will be martyred in Acts 7. But one student shared that we never know the impact of one life, right? You know, Stephen is seized, but the church actually in Acts 8, they spread out and, and they take the gospel with them. And we see that, you know, Jim Elliott was martyred in, in like 1956, but God has worked through that. And also another student pointed out, we, we may not be accepted everywhere we go. And we see Stephen was not accepted. He was by some, but not by all. So we're continuing our way through Acts. And just for a few minutes... We want to continue this. In Acts 6, we see the deacons. Deacons means servants. Deacon means servant. And the apostles are forming a group of servants to take care of all the needs. And that's fitting with the youth group right in front of me. They're literally right in front of me right now. Regardless of age, we must know that the church is not about me. It's not the mixed church. They're coming to get us a video of the youth kind of watching. And again, you can see the Niagara River in the background of the Horn Street Falls down there. And it's this Goat Island that we're on right now. We're on Three Sisters Island right now. No, sure. Well, we're part of the Niagara Falls Park right now. So the church is growing rapidly, and they're growing so rapidly. I'm just going to kind of summarize a lot of my notes. They're growing so rapidly. In Acts 1, Jesus had told the disciples, don't do anything. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And in Acts 1, he says, you will see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In Acts 2, we call it Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes upon the church, and many, many, many people are saved. Uh, I think it's like 4,000. Then in Acts 3 and 4, Peter and John heal a man. And they face persecution for it, but 5,000 are saved. And that's just counting the men, not the women and children. In Acts 5, the disciples are persecuted again. So now in Acts 6, some of the needs are not being met. So let's look at Acts 6, 1 through 7. And I want to show you four things. Firstly, the disciples ensure that the felt needs of the people are met. The disciples ensure that the felt needs, the physical needs of the people are met. Second, the disciples will not drop the ministry of the Word of God in prayer. They, they want to take care of the ministry of the Word of God in prayer. Thirdly, the disciples create expectations that the new leaders are men of noble Christian character. And I'm just going to summarize the last part 
at the end of Acts 6, Stephen is seized. So we're going to read Acts 6, 1 through 7. You may have the manuscript with you uh, in the pews. Acts 6, 1 through 7. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It's not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we, that's the disciples, will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And verse 7 says, And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So let's summarize some things here and make some applications. Uh, first notice that the needs of some are not met. Verse 1, simple. Some came to the disciples. The church is growing, it's exploding, and some came, and there's a complaint. Some of the people were not having their needs met. And as I looked at this passage, I noticed that there was a need. It was a legitimate need. It was a social issue. The church is growing. And it appears that we're in the mid-30s AD, probably five or six years after Jesus' death and resurrection. And uh, it says in Jerusalem, there are Jews who are Greek-speaking called Hellenists. They're Greek-speaking Jews. And then the rest of the Jews likely spoke Aramaic, and they're Hebrew Jews, Hebrew, Hebrew Jews. And many times Jewish people would come back to Jerusalem to spend their final years. But then the husband might die, and guess what? They're widows. And the wife is there by herself, and to be a widow in their day was a big deal. They need income, they need food. And, and so the Jewish people had daily distributions of food. They would distribute to non-residents and residents. And I have more about that in your manuscript if you want to look at a copy later on. And it seems like the Christians took that over. They took that over, but they're growing so fast that the Greek-speaking Jews feel left out. And here's an interesting thing. This was at a point when the, the devil and our fallen humanity could have brought division. The devil, demons, they could have brought divisions. But what happens? The head disciples come together. That's probably the twelve. And they talk and they pray and they seek the Lord. And then they bring in the other disciples and they make a plan. They make a plan which which brings unity. So in verses 2 through 4, the church leaders meet. They talk about the need. Notice he said, it's not right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in prayer. They had to focus on preaching the gospel. The core 12 had to focus on preaching the gospel. But they want to take care of this need. So, so what they say in verses 5 through 7, it tells what they do. The, they, they choose seven men. The men had to be full of the spirit, full of the spirit full of wisdom, and they had a good reputation, a good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. You, you need wisdom to discern who to help and when. Some will try to take advantage. They need wisdom. They certainly need the Holy Spirit, and they need a good reputation. So what they choose? They chose Stephen, and we're going to see him later in this chapter in the next. They choose Philip. We're going to see him in chapter 8, proclaiming the gospel with great miracles. Uh, by the way, the ones they choose all have their things. things. You want to help? The ones they choose all have Greek names. And there's an application there. They get Greek-speaking Jew, Jewish Christians uh, to meet those needs. And that, that just makes sense. And then in verses 8 through 15, Stephen is martyred. I'm not going to read those verses right now. Uh, not martyred. I'm sorry. He's seized. He's arrested. And in Acts chapter 7, which we'll talk about in two weeks, um, he becomes the first martyr. He preaches the gospel with power. He preaches the gospel with power. And so we see things going on here. Let me make a quick application or two. You know, when the church is growing, when things are happening, when a movement's growing, the devil can try to bring in, come in with division. That doesn't happen here. God's people work, and they work to meet the needs of the people, but also keep proclaiming the gospel. And it's just an awesome thing. And, and that's the, those are things that we need to keep in mind. We want to stay united, and we want to be like the apostles, stay united in meeting physical felt needs, but also never neglecting the ministry of the Word of God in prayer. And uh, one church I know of was growing, and they grew past 400 and 500 and 700. And a guy used to meet with the pastor and sit there for prayer every Sunday. 
And one Sunday he said, Pastor, we're getting too big. We got to stop growing. We're getting too big. And the pastor said, well, what do you mean too big? What, what number do you want us to stop at? 800, close the doors. We're at 800. We're going to close the doors. No more people are let in. Uh, and, and then he said, then the pastor said to the man, your daughter's not saved. What if she's number 801? The man left and thought about it. He came back the next week and, and he said, no, we're not getting too big. We need to keep growing. I want my daughter with tears in his eyes. He said, I want my daughter to know the Lord. I want my daughter to be saved. With tears in his eyes, he said, just one more. Let's just reach one more and one more and one more. That's what we see here in the book of Acts. I pray that's what we want. You know, you've heard me say, and I copied this off someone else. If God answered all of your prayers for one week, you would be saved. I pray that we care about the salvation of reaching the lost. Later in this chapter, Stephen seized. And then Stephen's martyred in the next chapter. But in a way, that's a shot heard around the world of Christianity. You've heard of the shot heard around the world. It comes from a, a poem by um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the Concord Hymn from 1837. The shot heard around the world of the Revolutionary War. We don't really know who fired the first shot of the Revolutionary War, but we've heard that phrase. And I look at this. You know, the, the, the deacons form here, and then Stephen sees, and then Stephen martyred as a shot heard around the world of Christianity. And I say that because after the deacons, and then Stephen, and then Stephen's being seized, the disciples flee. They spread out, but they go and they infect the people with the gospel. And I pray we're doing that too. Hey, thanks for joining me as we're at Niagara Falls today. We do the sermon a little bit differently. And uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray, Lord, we would take this to heart, and we would also want to infect people with the gospel. We would never, ever neglect meeting physical needs when we can with widows and orphans and children and uh, just so many, so many things we can think of, but also spreading the gospel like the disciples did. And we want to take the gospel everywhere we go. Lord, I thank you that I'm here with the youth group at this beautiful place, Niagara Falls, which had a designer. Lord, you designed and you created Niagara Falls, this place, and you created us. pray you blessing guide the rest of this youth trip, blessing guide the congregation, may you apply your word to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you for your patience with the video and the difference and how we're handling things today. I just wanted to give you a couple of words here before we go to prayer. How are we infecting the world around us? That would be my big question. How are we like the disciples? Are we committed to prayer and fasting? Or are we committed to service? I would challenge you. I know that some of you we see we're the servants. You're here every day, every time we've got the church doors open, like some of you are today. It looks like vacation is in full swing at this time of year as we look around the congregation, which is wonderful. We all need a break. But are you serving the Lord in one way or another? I would ask that if you don't have a ministry that you're serving in, that you come and talk to Steve, one of the elders, myself, and we'll get you plugged in because we need people to know. We need that one more person. We need to pray for the people that we put in these boxes. We need people to reach Jesus. I know that I, it's been heavy on my heart and who I'm going to reach out for the Lord because I'm in the Christian bubble, so to speak. I'm the pastor's wife. I'm the church secretary. My kids go to Christian school. So I, that's who I'm around. And, but the Lord showed me a person to reach out to, and I am praying for that person. And I, if you haven't already heard, come talk to me. You can help reach out to that person too. Um, because I want everybody in our culture to know Jesus so that they can come to know him and have eternal life and a rich life and a better life here. But right now, we're going to turn it over to prayer. We're going to open the altars for you to come forward and maybe pray for your ministry. Pray for someone to reach out to. Pray for you've got an unmet need that you need the Lord to talk to you in. Come forward and pray. Again, it's vulnerable, it's, it's icky feeling sometimes coming forward in front of other people, but we have to be vulnerable for Christ. So go ahead, Billy. Come forward, prayer workers, if you'd like to come forward, and we're going to pray right now.
beautiful song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's all stand as we be dismissed with this song and praise to God. majesty up at Niagara Falls because we can only imagine how that was created and why he created it just for his own glory. Lord Jesus, we just want to fill this earth more and more with your glory. You filled it enough beyond measure. Lord, sometimes we forget and we feel like we need to do something. I just ask that you help us see what we need to do this week as the disciples did, as they prayed and fasted and spent time glorifying you, or that some of the team went out and they served you with their hands. Lord Jesus, I pray that either way, you are glorified in us, in our service to you. I pray that you show us how we can glorify you more and more each day. Guide us this week. Be with us today and the rest of the week until we come together again next week. We just thank you and praise you. And in your name, amen.